Hello and welcome to Generation 16, the series that showcases the history of Sega's Mega Drive. I'm your host, Greg Seward. Fantasy Star 2 may have been nearly two years old by the end of 1990, but Sega was still plumbing its depths to produce new content. Kinds No Boken is the third of eight downloadable text adventures for the Sega game to Shoken service, detailing the backstory of each hero in the original game. Players had already learned why bounty hunter Amiya is so careful about picking which contracts she takes, and how spoiled rich kid Shilka turned to a life of crime for the sheer thrill of it. Kynes no Boken is the story of Kynes the Wrecker, whose most useful trait in Fantasy Star 2 was his ability to inflict a lot of damage on robotic enemies. Kynes is a bit of a street rat, scraping together a living in the back alleys of Loom. A self-described engineer, it seems like his repairs more often than not end up making things worse. There's a pretty funny scene during his adventure where Kynes fixes the air conditioner unit of a local bar only to have the place blow up just as he walks out the door because he mixed up the wiring. Unlike Amiya and Shilka's adventures, Kynes spends a lot of his time puttering around the few blocks in his neighborhood. As with the previous two games, drawing out a simple map is pretty much required if you don't want to get lost, especially when the world opens up a bit more. While Kynes does have an overarching quest to build a powerful Saigon, his story is more about going to local haunts and meeting people he already knows in order to help out and acquire parts. Fixing an AC unit nets the Meseda needed to buy gun parts. Giving a buddy a coin to play at the casino nets a glow stick so that Kynes can navigate dark areas, and so on. Eventually, Kynes gets tangled up in a local street gang's plot to destroy Mother Brain, leading him into some very dangerous situations and eventually getting him caught and imprisoned. This is the most unique bit of the game, as I believe this is the first Fantasy Star text adventure where you actually take control of someone other than the title character. We first meet Sue dancing at the local disco, but when Kynes gets kidnapped, suddenly we're in her shoes, creeping around a warehouse looking for ways to free Kynes from captivity. It's a relatively short part of a relatively short game, but a welcome surprise when it happens. Which is a good thing, because unlike Shilka's adventure, which featured a decent amount of original artwork depicting what the thief was up to, even including costume changes, Kynes' adventure goes back to the same formula of Amiya no Boken, where we really only see a still image of the title character, along with a very small handful of enemies and a single shot of Sue. This step back is a bit of a disappointment, to be honest, but not surprising considering how small this game's footprint needed to be in order to download at a reasonable speed and be stored on a tiny bit of memory back in 1990. Combat is the same as the previous two games. The item you choose to attack with denotes the number of dice you get to roll on your turn. The rolled number is also affected by a multiplier based on your weapon. Honestly, as long as you're using the proper weapons in Kynes' adventure, which, for a large part of the story, includes his super powerful Saigon, battles feel like an afterthought. The only one that even came close to catastrophe for me was the final boss, though I'm not 100% sure that wasn't a scripted event. Kynes' adventure was written by Kenji Orimo, who was about to go on to develop Genesis role-playing classics like Shining Force and Landstalker. He also worked on Nectaris, Alundra 2, and the Shining Force doppelganger for the Super Famicom, Fida, the Emblem of Justice. <music> Kynes' 
kinds no boken, like Amiya and Shilka's game before it, is nothing special. It's fun in the context of being a free, downloadable game that deepens the lore of the flagship role-playing game on the Mega Drive at the time, but you get what you pay for. It's short, simple, and features no way to save your progress. It's meant to be played and then forgotten. And that'll do it for this episode of Generation 16. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And consider supporting the show on Patreon. Join me next time when we go back to exploring the Mega LD library for the Pioneer Laser Active. See you then.